there there must be you must have like twins or something you're everywhere let me ask you a question about uh because you used the word the sequence for the uh coronavirus 19 uh and that's the one i take it that the chinese have shared for that sequence uh my understanding is also that they've been unwilling to share other uh other uh samples of the virus that that that, that is a that that sequence just one Spa place right. and time, and that it would be useful to know, to see other, see other samples. Is that true? I mean, from a scientific point of view, is that something that would be useful? It would be very useful, but we're, we're mitigating that problem, Dr. Harris, because right. we now have, unfortunately, enough our cases own, in our own. Yeah. The, uh, now, the fatality rate is, of course, controversial because who just announced that they think it's 3.4 percent. You've been I think quoted in the New England Journal of Medicine a few days ago is it, well it's probably less Two. than one percent. No, is that where do you, where do you, where do you okay, think it's going to so, end up? Because we so, don't know the denominator. But right? that's, that's you said it, yeah. sir. Um, if you look at the cases that have come to the attention of the medical authorities in China, and you just do the math, the math is about two percent. If you look at certain age groups, certain risk groups, the fatality is much higher. Mm -hmm. But as a group. It's going to depend completely on what the factor of asymptomatic cases are. So if you have asymptomatic cases that are a lot, it's going to come down. What we're hearing right now on a recent call from the WHO this morning is that there aren't as many asymptomatic cases as we think, which may them elevate, I think, what their mortality is. You should, you know, as well as anybody, that the mortality for seasonal flu is 0.1%. So even if it goes down to 1%, it's still 10 times more fatal. When, when will we know with our own data, do yeah. you think? We will know with our own, I hope it's, you know, I'm, 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 I'm torn, uh, Dr. Harris, because if we get enough data to have a big N, it's going to be bad news for us. Uh, so, but we're learning more and more. The, the thing that's encouraging is that as part of the WHO umbrella team that went to China finally after a long period of time, there were two uh, USA individuals on there, one from the CDC and one from the National Institutes of Health. He has come back. He is now in self-isolation in his, in his home, but he's going to be giving us a report pretty soon about that. And I think I predicted that we would be about two to three months to go into phase one trials. And I think we're going to beat that. I think we'll be in in probably about six weeks, which, as a matter of fact, will be the fastest that anyone ever has gone from the identification of a sequence into a phase one trial of any vaccine that's ever been done. That's the good news. The sobering news is that since vaccines are given to normal individuals, what is paramount is safety and whether or not it works. To me, to serve on this committee. I do remember... So we'll do a phase one trial. We'll do it in a number of our centers, including our center at the NIH. That will take about three to four months. And then if successful, which I believe it will be, there's no reason to believe it won't be safe, we'll go into what's called a phase two trial. The phase one trial is 45 individuals. Phase two trials are hundreds, if not a couple of thousand individuals. It would take then about a year to a year and a half to be fully confident that we would have a vaccine that would be able to protect the American people.